I will start with, with uh, our international guest, uh, uh, Professor Naohisa. I have a question for you. Uh, what's, what is the science limit for a band ligation te technique for such a uh, neuroendocrine tumor? And the other thing, technical thing also, do we always need to inject underneath such a lesion? Because for Barrett's, we are usually used not to lift. So these are two practical technical questions for you. We can't hear you. Could you please uh, unmute yourself? I'm sorry, no, not standing on the mic. Uh, yes, thank you very much for your very important question. Uh, for the first question, uh, maximum size of the target lesion is one centimeter in the greatest diameter uh, because of the capacity of the cap and also the risk for lymph node metastasis. Uh, when the lesion size is bigger than uh, uh, 10 millimeter, uh, there will be some risk for uh, having lymph node metastasis. That's why our usual target for the cap resection technique is up to uh, 10 millimeter in size. And the, uh, for the second question, I usually inject some solution uh, below the target lesion in order to separate target lesion from the mass layer. Sometimes because of uh, fibrosis under the lesion, whether it, it was caused by the tumor genesis or the caused by the previous uh, biopsy scar. Uh, sometimes uh, when we suck the target lesion without uh, submucosal injection, uh, it turns to full sickness resection. That means uh, there will be perforation. Uh, that's why we usually inject uh, uh, around five uh, cc of uh, injection solution uh, below the target lesion. Then uh, we can keep the safety of the procedure. Thank you, thank you so much, Professor Now, Hisa. Now I have a question uh, coming from from our participants to to, to Stefan. So Stefan, how about using underwater EMR for such a small neuroendocrine tumor? The, mm. Is there evidence that this may help us? Mm. Would you apply this kind of technique? I think it's not a failure. Um, of course, you can do that. I don't have much experience with one robotics um, EMR. I use it sometimes if the if it's hard to visual or we have a lot of bloating, and uh, I think it's a good idea. And you can of course use it as the, the um, tissue is more flexible. But I think in the rectum it's quite easy with some sucking to suck the lesion completely into your cap. So I think it's not necessary, but of course an alternative. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, for your response. And then we'll move to Patrick. So you apply a very bulky device. You try to remove the lesion even with the muscle layer or even deeper. So when you so it it's like a you know very aggressive approach. So what is the limit? When do you think that uh, that that you should stop and consider other types of resection, like to send the patient to for a surgical resection. What is what is your limit? Um, I think think you know up to one one point five centimeters. You can go for a nodal lesion uh, for a full sickness resection. If it uh, the lesion is is bigger than one point five or two centimeters, then it's too bulky. You don't bring it into the cap. And uh, it's not the same for flatter lesions. If you have a flat lesion, this can you can easily resect 2.5 centimeters. If you go to the right colon where the, the wall is very thin and it's, it's quite mobile. So, but in a net case, I think if a net is more than 1.5, at the latest two centimeters, you should go for other resection techniques and <coughs> you should uh, send normally the patient to, to the surgeons. So is there a place for EUS assessment before, uh, before uh, endoscopic resection? Yeah, I think so. If you look at the data we have, it's a little bit scarce, but we have some data. Um, lesions with, uh, with the size we demonstrated, about five, uh, six millimeters, you don't have to do an EUS first, but in uh, bigger lesions like one centimeter and more, you should go first for an EUS to see uh, how deep the lesion go. Okay, and then, Professor Nalhisa, are you still with us? Yeah, of course. Okay, <laughs> so what would you do in a situation when the, the, the previous practitioner or whoever what was it did not recognize the lesion and removed it with inappropriate technique? What would you 
suggest? Is there a role for surveillance, or should or should we treat this lesion and with what kind of technique? Uh, it depends on the result of the pre previous histology. It tends to be vertical margin positive. We uh, uh, would perform ESD in order to make it sure the histology and uh, rigid, uh, to check the residual tumor. Uh, usually, we don't perform ESD at the beginning of the procedure uh, if the previous endoscopist didn't touch the target <coughs> lesion. But once it was resected by the previous uh, endoscopist, uh, band ligation technique uh, sometimes doesn't work well because of the scarred tissue, then uh, ESD uh, would be much better. Thank you so now uh, so much. Now we, we need more data. We learned that we need more data. So I would like to uh, Stefan to, to talk a little mm. bit uh, about data. Thank you. Uh, shortly coming back to your first question or the question from the auditorium, I think the question was whether we can do a standard EMR. And I have to emphasize this, we can't do a standard EMR. Also with underwater EMR, I think there's a high risk to leave some remnants. So you shouldn't do a standard EMR, also not underwater. Okay, and coming back to the presentation, we just want to show shortly from our cases in Zurich. And since last year we collected our cases, we did nine cases with a rubber band ligation therapy and did the EMR. And you can see here, we had a mean age of 62 years. The size was between three and 10 millimeters, around 6.3 in mean. We had no complications. We had an R0 resection rate and we had all the low risk criteria for uh, net tumor. And of course, the big question is also when we saw your nice pathology pictures, whether the lesion is resected with a good distance to the lesion. And I'd like to ask you, you took a look closer to them than we did, um, if they were resected completely. Yes, so the resection is, uh, is completely. I can uh, confirm that, but uh, with the ligation technique, uh, it's much more closer to the vertical margin. And I can show you uh, some cases here. First of all, I can show you uh, summarizing here the cases, and you can see all tumors were 10 or less than 10 millimeter in diameter and size in, and the invasion uh, deepness uh, classifies all tumors as PT1A and all showed a low grade um, morphology uh, with proliferation index uh, lower than one or two uh, percent. And Yes, the uh, horizontal margins are quite well, but uh, the vertical margin is more critical in this technique. And I can show you here uh, all cases in an overview. And uh, you can see case one and two, we, we see such a nodular mass in, in, as in the most cases, but in case three and also in the last case nine, there's more, more um lateral uh, spreading of the tumor cells and maybe this is uh, a little bit more difficult to uh, 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 to estimate the tumor size uh, clinically and uh, most of the cases have uh, quite well uh, tissue layer, a nice uh, connective tissue layer at the basis. But if you look at uh, case seven and eight, there is a margin really uh, very close. Yes, this is so my, uh, <laughs> uh, what, what, what we see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for fabulous local data.